Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I wanted to just do a quick video wrapping up the series on Christmas and a lot of people are probably going to be like, what? that's it, that's it? I see. I know I didn't hit on everything out there that is pagan when it comes to Christmas. Why? Because I don't need to. Uh, John 17, 17 says it all. Okay. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. Okay. What happens is, is when someone hits you up with something and say it's about God and it's for God, chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. Now, when that upsets people, what do you do? You, you keep your calm and you still have grace and you look at them and charity and you look at them and go and remind them, you're a Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman, right? Hopefully they'll say, yes, I am. Remind them that this is supposed to be your foundation on matters of faith and practice, right? Well, yeah, it is. Hopefully you can reach them and calm them down. But if they just keep getting upset, upset, just keep pointing them to this. Keep pointing them to God's perfect written word, the King James Bible. And if they continue to get upset, there's nothing you can do. Don't get upset yourself. Don't lose your temper. Um, I just wanted to hit up the things that the Bible-believing Christians as a whole are still trying to do, thinking it's innocent and okay for Christians today. They'll point out things that are obviously pagan and they don't want to have anything to do with it, but they still do pagan practices. They're not purposely trying to worship the false gods or they're not trying to worship their flesh and put their flesh first, but they're promoting it too. Even though their heart is not aimed in that direction, but they're promoting it. Okay? It still has no basis in Scripture. Okay. That's the reason I did some of the videos that I did. I didn't do a lot, okay, I, um, because I really want to get to, to the Word of God. I want to get to Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, but we are to warn people. That's why I put the videos out. Okay, I put these videos out back to back because I believe when God puts something on your heart to share with the brethren, get it out there. Okay. Does not always have to be once a week. On average, I usually try to get out a couple videos once a week, and um, doesn't always have to be once a week. Because some people say, "Oh, he's just going crazy, putting out tons of videos." I'm going back to back because I want to get these videos out so we can get to what the whole point of, of the birth of Jesus Christ. Get it to be about Jesus Christ 100%. Okay. Um, and the reason I also put some videos out. Sometimes I'll put out a lot of videos in one week because I have I truly believe that there might not be a next week. I'll just put out one video a week. There might not be a next week. Okay? Jesus can come back at any time. Okay? So the motivation to really get me through all this, there's been three motivations. A, I want to warn the brethren. It's love. I'm telling you this stuff out of love when it comes to the paganism of Christmas. And I really want to get to Jesus Christ. Okay. And the third motivation uh, the help that I'm doing these videos a lot, we got a lot of rain, praise the Lord, and it's raining nonstop every day. So uh, I do, you can do only do so much organizing until you want to do something for the Lord. And I'm going through a lot of uh, studies and everything. So I just see so much of the lost world and the practices that professing Christians do today, okay. which is why I was God put it on my heart to preach against the pagan uh, traditions of Christmas and Christmas period and promote the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, Trinity versus the Godhead, okay? That goes back to what I said about chapter and verse. You've got people that believe in the Godhead, but they use Trinity terms and won't let them go. Okay? Babel buildings, okay? Uh, they'll tell you and say, okay, I believe that people that we are the body of Christ, we are the church, you know, our bodies is a temple for the Holy Ghost, but they can't let go of these battle buildings. Okay. And the same thing goes with Christmas versus the birth of Jesus Christ. There are people out there that will sit there and they will do Bible studies, the King James Bible, and they will preach, they'll teach uh, their families and do a Bible study and read about the birth of Jesus Christ during the month of December. But they can't let go of their pagan practices that have nothing to do with that. Okay? Uh, the professing Christian world loves to do things the world's way, and that has been creeping into Bible-believing Christianity for some time. And what I mean by some time, I mean a, a long time. This has been in the making a long time. Satan trying to use the lost world and false converts to creep into truly Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women and mess us up. 
Okay, that's been going on for years and years and years, all the way back to the the disciples, I believe. Apostles will do some studies. Um, he's always been trying to mess up God's people. Even back in the Old Testament, he's always been trying to mess up God's people. Second okay. Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. When I mention all these things about the Trinity, the God versus the Godhead, Babel buildings versus, you know, that we are the body of the church, uh, the church, the people, our body is the temple for the Holy Ghost, uh, Christmas versus the birth, they don't want to let go of the world. Okay, we're supposed to come out from the world, we're supposed to be separate, we're not supposed to be like the world, we're not supposed to be doing things the world's way. Okay. Yeah. Imagine someone walking up to you in August and asking you, what are you up to this month? And you respond with, well, today I'm going to celebrate Jesus' birth. How is that for being separate from the lost world? Everybody's, it's just been drilled into us a mindset that you have to do it in December along with the rest of the world. How is that for being separate? Someone walks up to you, what did I say, the month of August, oh, today I'm celebrating the, the birth of Jesus Christ. I'm giving God glory for what he did coming to this earth in the likeness of sinful flesh. Right. Now ask yourself this, imagine how many doors God can open because of that. It's just something to think about, brothers and Christ. We are not to conform to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can never do that if you're conforming to this world. You cannot do that with the birth of Jesus Christ if you're conforming and doing things the world's way. Now, that gets to this point. What breaks my heart in all of this is how people will stand for absolute truth in all major doctrines, but will compromise on what they call little things, little things that are not important. Okay. All things are important to the Lord. Okay, There is no little things. Okay. It's sanctification. It's always a sanctification issue. Okay, The major doctrines can become a salvation issue, but with the small things it's a sanctification issue. It's your walk with the Lord issue, if you want to say. Okay. I'm telling you from experience, brothers and sisters, that when you get things out of your life that you cannot give God glory, thanks, or do in the name, do in His name, the name of Jesus Christ, out of your life, you walk with the Lord Jesus Christ gets stronger. Your walk gets stronger. I'm telling you from experience. Since I've been saved to now, my walk seems to just explode as far as getting stronger and closer to the Lord. Every time God says, hey, you see that that's in your life? doesn't glorify me, you can't give me thanks in it, you can't do it in the name of Jesus Christ, get it out of your life. And you get it out of your life, and your walk gets stronger. Your relationship to the Lord, you become closer to the Lord. I've seen it time and time again in my life, and how many of you brothers and sisters in Christ out there can testify to it? It's not just about Christmas, it's about anything. Okay. Um, the Trinity versus the Godhead. You get Trinity out, the vocabulary and everything, you believe the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit. You believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father, but you still want to use uh, Trinity terms. When you get that out of your life, you'll realize that your walk with the Lord is a lot closer than it was before. When you're getting junk out of your life that doesn't glorify God, that doesn't line up with Scripture, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, things of the world, I've preached this before, video games, movies, TV shows, um, anything else that you're doing that you take to an excess, addictions, okay? all this stuff that doesn't glorify God, you get them out of your life, your walk with the Lord gets stronger. You, get, you become closer to the Lord, God will draw you closer as you give things up in your life that doesn't glorify Him. Okay? And what we're talking about today, Christmas, you really want to have the full uh, I, don't, I don't want to say experience. You really want to be close, really close to the Lord when it comes to the birth of Jesus Christ. Get all that junk out of your life, that pagan nonsense they call Christmas and all the practices, and just make it 100% about Jesus Christ. 0% about you, and 100% about Jesus Christ. You'll see how close you can get right, to being with the Lord, how strong your relationship with the Lord is, and your walk with the Lord will become.
Now, I got to touch on something real quick because I didn't do a video on it. So I just want to touch on it real quick. Um, the manger scene, because people are going to get on to me now. Oh, he's going to attack the manger scene. Okay. Be careful of pagan images. Not just the manger scene. There's a lot of pagan imagery that has to do with Christmas. And they grab the manger scene and say, well, this is Christian. Okay. So real quick, two things I have against the manger scene. It's not accurate. And everybody all come on. Aren't we supposed to be about absolute truth? We've talked about this in other videos. You're supposed to, have, as a Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman, we're supposed to have a love for the truth where we seek it with all our heart and go after it with all we have. And when we find it, we hold on to it and we don't let it go. That's how we're supposed to be as Christians. Is the uh, manger scene accurate? No. They show three wise men when the Bible doesn't say there's three wise men. There's three gifts, but not three wise men. And they show them there at the manger along with the um, shepherds and everything. Uh, that's not truth. That's lie. You're promoting a lie. Oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Like I said, all I can do is point you to this. Truth. This says they weren't there. What are you going to do with it? Oh, it's no big deal. Okay, it's on you. Uh, the second thing is the physical image of a baby Jesus. Catholic Church worships a baby Jesus. They do. They worship adult Jesus. Uh, they worship a baby Jesus. They worship Mary. So having a, a statue of Mary there, uh, I, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't have anything to do with the manger scene. But the Bible commands that we're not to have images of Jesus Christ. Period. As a baby, as an adult, as a symbol, nothing. Why? Because the image of Jesus Christ is the image of the Godhead. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And then we're given the command in Acts chapter 17, verse 29. For as much then are we, then as we are the offspring of God, who ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's devices. Is it, do I believe it's a sin to have an image of a baby Jesus? Absolutely, it's an idol. The Bible condemns having images of Jesus Christ. So, if I seem like I'm just being so hard, you're just coming down on all my traditions. This has been in the making for, th not thousands, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay, Actually, thousands of years going back to when Christmas was first brought up by Constantine. We read about that in three, oh, 300 A.D., a little bit after 300 A.D., and then it became a national heart holiday like a thousand to eleven hundred AD. Okay, this has been in the making to infiltrate and screw up Bible believing, God fearing Christian men and women. They didn't tolerate Christmas and its practices in the past. I'm not talking about in the last hundred, two hundred years. I'm talking about Paul's day, the early Christians, the ones that were being slaughtered by the Roman Catholic Church in the Colosseums before they came, became Christian, the Roman paganism became Christian. Okay. This has been in the making. Okay? So when you sit there, even for me, when I got saved, and I look at Christmas, there was a lot to clean up. It's almost like getting saved with your life, and you're looking at your life, and you're like, it's just a mess. God, I need your help. Help me clean this up. I can't do it on my own. Help me. When you look at Christmas, you need to have the same attitude. Christmas isn't biblical. Lord, help me clean this stuff up and get it out of my life. Let me make it about you. My life is supposed to be about you 100% now. All right? But that's why, because people are getting mad, because I'm throwing this out here, and we're going to get to what, the whole point where I, my attitude towards all this is going to be towards those who reject truth. We're going to get to that. Okay? But my advice, based off Scripture, stay away from the manger scene. Like I said, there's, even though you don't worship the Mary, a big, uh, like I said, over half the world's professing Christians, and the Muslims and the Catholics... They all have a Mary, these false Marys, they become Mary worship all over. And it's best not to have that statue, period. And baby Jesus is condemned. Uh, and like I said, the wise men weren't there. Oh, but it's not a big deal. It's not a... We're supposed to be about absolute truth. Uh, and that, like I said, that does irk me sometimes that God's working on me to have patience and have grace and charity. But it always irks me when someone says it's not a big deal. You show them absolute truth and they go, it's not a big deal. Truth is a big deal. 
Okay, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, he's a big deal to me. He's, he's the foundation of my life, him and his perfect written word. And when I fail, I fall on my knees and repent. Sometimes I can get prideful, but when someone corrects me, I pray that the Lord opens my heart, not be, helps drop any pride, and I can repent and get that out of my life. Okay? So, the main point of this video is also, since I got into ministry, God's called me into ministry, I wanted to make some videos to get it out there to say, okay, so in the future when people say, well, what do you believe about Christmas? Here's the videos. Okay? Well, people say that Christmas doesn't mean Christ's Mass. They're lying to you. Here's the proof. Oh, it's not about the uh, Christmas time isn't about the summer, uh, winter solstice. Here's the proof. Oh, the Christmas tree isn't pagan. Here's the proof based off scripture. Anybody who defends a Christmas tree at this point, all I can do is keep pointing you to this and pray that someday you'll follow this and not traditions of men. Um, I didn't just want to come out like in my comments and just say, I don't believe in Christmas. Well, why? I just don't believe in Christmas. A lot of these people, uh, I believe Christmas is okay, it's no big deal. Why? Because I believe Christmas is okay and it's no big deal. Yeah, but, but why? Where's their foundation for justifying Christmas? They have none. Some of them will twist scripture, but for the most part they have none. It's my feelings and opinions. I wanted to be able to come out and say something that said, hey, this is what the Bible says. We're not supposed to have false idols and false gods. We're not supposed to be doing the practices that the lost world does, even though we're not trying to worship a false god. We're not supposed to be doing practices that are based off uh, full, uh, lowercase g god worship. Okay? I wanted to get this out there in ministry and get it out there. I'm not going to be one of those people that have to go hardcore on Christmas all year round and just make that my ministry. No. I just wanted to get some videos out there to say, hey, I'm against Christmas because the Bible's against Christmas. All right. Let's see. Now, another thing to touch on real quick is it is Christmas a salvation issue? Okay. It's not a salvation issue. I just want to put out there, I don't hate people who want to so after all this, if you still want to keep your pra pagan practices with, of the Christmas tree, you just enjoy all the lights, you still want to give each other gifts, and it's about you, 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 the beautiful lights, I get to see the beautiful lights, it's about you, 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 me, 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 or as I used to say, me, myself, and I, then that's fine. It's not good, I'm against it, I said it's fine. I mean it's fine in the sense that I can't make you not do it, I can't force you to stop. Okay? I don't hate you because you do it. I love you, and my true love for you is preaching the truth to you and showing you the truth, saying, you got to get this stuff out of your life. You want your walk with the Lord to be stronger than it is now? Get that junk out of your life. Okay? Make it about Jesus 100%. Um, I will not write off a ministry who stands for the King James Bible, and they like to teach their family. They sit down and they teach their family the true birth of Jesus Christ. And then on the side, on the side, because it's not based off scripture, on the side they do pagan practices of, of Christmas. I'm not going to write off a ministry like that and say, okay, they're wicked and everything. What's the major doctrines that that ministry teaches? Okay. Are they right on on internal security? Yep, they're right on here. Bible version issue, they're right on. The true gospel, uh, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away of the body of Christ, the Godhead, you know, they're right on. Okay, I'm not writing off that ministry. They might be off over here. But it's not a salvation issue. Okay. Do I wish they would make a stand so they're not promoting something evil and wicked? Yeah. But I'm not going to write them off and say they're, wi they're wicked. Everybody stay away from them. You don't do that. Okay. You correct them like I'm doing through videos. And at that point, it's, it's between them and God. I might be jumping ahead. And this is what I mean, uh, Romans chapter 14, 11. Um, I'm trying to make this quick, which is why I'm not turning to the pages, because it's supposed to be just a, a wrapping up, and I don't want it to be an hour long. Uh, Romans 14, 12, 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God, so then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. You cannot beat people over the head with the Bible. You just can't. You promote truth, you preach the truth to them, and at that point, it's between them and the Lord. 
Okay? We will all have to stand before God and give an account of our lives. Okay? I do believe those who believe in the Godhead and refuse to let go of Trinity terms, they'll be answering for it at the judgment seat of Christ. Same thing with these people that are saved but can't let go of these Babel buildings. Um, as rare as that's going to be, because I don't believe people can truly be saved and stay in these Babel buildings forever. They're just so wicked. They, they don't teach truth. They go against the Word of God. Most of them don't even use the King James Bible. But let's say there's someone who is saved and they're kind of clinging to their old-fashioned small church in their small, small town, and they just promote, you have to go to a Babel building. They're going to be answering for that at the judgment seat of Christ. And that goes for Christmas. Every one of you out there that have the nonchalant attitude of, well, it's not a big deal, or they're vehemently for all these pagan practices, you will definitely be answering for it at the judgment seat of Christ. But the whole point is, is I can't beat people over the head with the Bible. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you cannot beat people over the head with the Bible. You preach truth to them based on Scripture, not man's feelings and opinions. You preach truth to them. What they do with that truth at that point is between them and the Lord. Okay. I'm not, I put on here, I'm not going to fight with you. I'm not going to fight with the people who just vehemently think there's no big deal and I'm going to keep Christmas. I'm not going to fight with you. Okay? I've shown truth and the biggest rule of thumb I keep saying is this chapter and verse. Well, I'm doing this for the birth of Jesus Christ. Chapter and verse. Well, I'm going to do that. Chapter and verse. Now, I want to point out real quick, you have people on both sides of the extreme. I just want to put that out there. I understand there's people on both sides of the extreme. You have people that are for Christmas that has the attitude of, give me Christmas or give me death. They'll have excuse after excuse, I want my Christmas, and they'll get mad at you and, and start hating you because you attack their Christmas. Right? Is that something they should do? No. Just, I just remind you, it's about the birth of Jesus Christ. That's what, uh, the birth, that's what it's supposed to be about. It's not about Christmas, okay? But you got these people that are so hardcore. When I started doing videos, I don't pay attention, but I had a brother in Christ tell me, you realize since you started doing these videos, you lost, I think it was three to six subscribers in the last week. And I'm like, that, that, they, they fall under this category right here. Give me Christmas or give me death. That's, that's I'm just, it, you shouldn't be like that, Okay? You have a serious problem if it has to be December, it has to be Christmas for you to celebrate the birth of Jesus. You have a serious problem. If you can't do it any other time of the year and it has to be in December, and it's the only time of the year that you oftentimes do it as a whole, your whole life is to say, Bible-believing, god fearing man and woman, it's always been around December, you got a serious problem. Give me Christmas or give me death if you can't do it any other time of the year. Okay? Then you have people on the extremes that are against Christmas on the opposite side, okay? If you are for Christmas, you are lost. You're hell-bound. Okay? You're a Satanist. Okay? Uh, I'd look at those people and say, are you turning salvation into works? Get them to think about it. Are you trying to turn salvation into works? So in order to be saved, I cannot fall into the trap of, I can never sin again, basically. I can't fall into the trap of Christmas. And it is a trap. It's been, there's a lot of subtle things that are done that's very deceptive to try to get you to do things you're not supposed to. Okay. So God's grace is not enough anymore. When Jesus said it's finished, he, he forgot to add that you can't, you can't uh, celebrate the birth of Jesus in December. You can. You can't make a mistake and fall back into doing sinful things when it comes to the practices of Christmas. You do that, you've lost your salvation. Okay. You got people that are in the extreme, okay? I always remind them, just remind them. If they're Bible believing, God fearing men and women, and they're attacking you, saying you're lost because you're standing for the pagan practices, not all of them, but they're still, like I said, I only did a few videos because I'm just basing the ones that a lot of the Bible believing, God fearing men and women are still trying to hold on to. Um, ask them, what plan of salvation did you get saved off of? When they call you lost and you're hell bound because you are in error, and you're in sin, standing for these uh, pagan practices, I'm even, as someone who's against them and doesn't celebrate them, would even hit those people up that are on the extreme on that side saying, what uh, salvation did you get saved from? What plan of salvation did you get saved off of? Okay. And I'm not doing it, to, you don't do it because you're saying they're lost either, but you're doing it to remind them, hopefully, the plan of salvation they got saved off of to get them to go, okay, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going a little overboard on this. I shouldn't be making it a salvation issue. 
Um, so, can you celebrate Jesus' birthday? Here's another thing. I took a brother in Christ by surprise in this one. Can you celebrate Jesus' birthday? Absolutely not. Got a lot of people out there going, well, what are you talking about? Okay. We do not know the day that Jesus was born. Words have meaning, okay? We do not know the day that Jesus was born. You have to know the day in order to have a celebration saying it's a birthday. I was born on April 30th, okay? That's my birthday. Can we celebrate my birthday? We could. I know the exact day I was born. Do you know the exact day that Jesus Christ was born? Right. Now there's a point to this. Please bear with me. Don't get all, he's just, just being ridiculous. Hear me out, please. Okay. Can you give God glory and thanks for a son that was born in the likeness of sinful flesh, born of a virgin? Okay. God manifests in the flesh, coming in the likeness of sinful flesh. Can you celebrate that? Absolutely. Why is there a difference? Because you can do that any day of the year. You can celebrate and give God glory and give Him praise for the birth of Jesus Christ any day of the year. When you start using the term birthday, it has to be a specific day or a specific time period. December. Hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Okay. Can you celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ? Amen. Yes. Can you celebrate His birthday? Taking a day and saying it's His birth. No. Okay. We don't know the day. God did that for a reason. Right? So, remember, it's a sanctification issue. It's based off the Christmas side. If someone sits down in the month of December and says, hey, what we're doing, what we're going to be doing next, doing a Bible study and going through, and they just feel called, okay, this month I want to do it. I did it three months ago. I just feel like I want to do it again. Okay. It's not a sin. I just want you to know, I'm not saying it's a sin to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ in the month of December. The sanctification issue comes in when you don't make it 100% about Jesus Christ. It starts becoming about you. It comes about the way of the world. And so you start bringing in pagan practices. It's a sanctification issue. I said it before, I'll say it again. Okay, Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of, the, of men, traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, you have to celebrate Jesus' birth on December. Okay? And not after Christ. You've got to do all these things that aren't in Scripture. Is that after Christ? No. Let that verse sink in. Being spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. Being spoiled by traditions of men. Okay? Being spoiled by the rudiments of the world. You can be spoiled by all that stuff. I know a lot of people that were good teachers that they were spoiled in a lot of areas. They, they were spoiled when it came to the Trinity versus the Godhead. Okay? They were spoiled when it came to Babel buildings, okay? the traditions of men. Okay? Do your best to keep reevaluating your life. I was talking to a brother in Christ about the communion. That's what it's all about, reevaluating your life and comparing it to the Word, saying, Lord, is there still stuff I need to get out of my life? Is there still stuff that I'm not doing that I should be doing? Is there stuff I'm doing that I'm not supposed to be doing? Is there anything else that's new that you want me to do for you, O oh Lord? It's about evaluating your life. That's what communion is all about, your walk with the Lord. Okay. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. You can have man's understanding, or you can have God, trust God and His understanding, and let Him give you His understanding understanding okay why do we not know the day of Jesus birth because God knew what was going to happen in the future he's past present and future okay he knew about the pagan practices of December he knew about the Catholic Church a uh, Constantine trying to steal everything that's supposed to be Christian and perverting it and everything he knew about all that okay you need to have God's understanding and you're gonna find it here the Holy Spirit in you is gonna open this book to you and show you God's understanding don't go off the world's understanding, man's understanding. Okay? Verse 6, And all thy ways, all thy ways, not just some or when I feel like it, all thy ways acknowledge Him. And He shall direct thy paths. Your path seems to fall apart or go off the wrong direction when you stop acknowledging Him. 
when you start steering away from this book and start doing practices and doing things this book's against or it's not for or has no basis in scripture I'm doing this for Jesus chapter and verse this is about Jesus chapter and verse okay this book in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths your paths will stay straight it goes back to what I said your walk with the Lord you want your walk with the Lord to be strong? Make sure your life lines up with this book as, most, as best as you can. And when you see where you're failing, do your best to let God fix it and clean it up. Okay? Which gets to verse 7. Okay? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Okay? So many people will defend things like the Trinity, uh, these Babel buildings, uh, Christmas, and they, they're wise in their own eyes because I feel this and it's not a big deal. What about God's Word? Something to think about. Okay. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. We talked about that when it came to the Christmas tree. You're to fear the Lord. Where's the fear at? Even people that are nonchalant, that's not a big deal. It's proven. It's pagan. 100% pagan. The Bible shows it's pagan and condemns it. Where's the fear of the Lord? Why isn't your attitude, okay, the Bible, guys, and start, when you mention Christmas trees, it's pagan, you need to get that out of your practice when it comes to celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. There's still people out there that have this nonchalant attitude, well, it's not a big deal. Well, eh, it's not a big deal. Where's the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord is, what, is one of the big motivators to depart from evil. Probably the biggest motivator for you to depart from evil. I fear God's chastisement as a, as a uh, saved sinner. Okay? I don't seek it. When it happens, I give God thanks for it to get me back on the right track. But I don't seek His chastisement. Okay? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. What's this passage talking about? Being wise, they're being wise in their own eyes. Uh, true wisdom is fearing the Lord. All right, so people, I could go in there. People are saying they're wiser than God. You can go on that. When it comes to the Trinity, the Babel buildings, Christmas, any other subject where they steer away from the Bible, what's going on is you got people saying that they're wiser than God. They know better than God. Okay, God made a mistake. He should have Christianized a Christmas tree that's a Christian virgin version of the pagan. So you can have your pagan Christmas tree, and we can have a Christmas. See, they're trying to be wiser than God. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, you know, keep reading it every so often. Okay? Let God be your wisdom. Okay? Make sure you acknowledge Him in all His ways. Not my ways, not your ways, not the lost world's ways, not the professing, which is the lost world, but professing Christian's world's way, God's way. Okay? Now, I touched on everything... I'm excited. I really am excited to get to the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, to start doing a series where we just go through and talk about as much as we can. Might go through the month of January. Oh, I can't do that because it's got to be the month of December. I'm sorry. It's sarcasm. We're probably going to end up going into January because I, I really want to go hardcore on it, but I also want to get back to some of the other studies and just go back and forth uh, and get through a lot of stuff that we can learn from the birth of Jesus Christ and apply it to today as far as what's going on there is the same thing going on today. Um, the biggest example that I got excited about is, you know, Satan attempted to kill Jesus twice. Uh, one before he was born and once after he was born. And you go back and look at some of the stories how Satan's always trying to destroy God's ministry, his people. and. We have Jesus Christ in us. Like I said, it's, it's some good, neat studies about that where we can apply it to us today. And some of it's just information of, this is amazing. I never really looked at it that way. Mm -hmm. So, I want to also get to the videos of Jesus' birth because so far it's been about paganism in our flesh. We've learned about the Bible when it came to the Christmas tree. Uh, we're not supposed to have any false gods. So there is the Bible in some of the videos I did when I could because a lot of these things are no basis in Scripture. Um, but I really want to get back to Jesus Christ because that's what it's supposed to be about. 100% about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Not our friends, our family, our kids. Um, fleshly things. Okay, worldly things. It's supposed to be about Jesus Christ. So... 
Next time God puts it on your hearts to remember and glorify God for the birth of His Son, Jesus Christ, which could be any day of the year. I'm going to keep putting that in there. Make sure that it is about Jesus, 100% without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, about Jesus Christ. Okay? All practices and traditions of men that are not found in Scripture, they are designed to distract you and put the spotlight on the world, to put the spotlight on you, to please your flesh. You say, well, my practices don't get in the way. I mean, the Christmas tree really doesn't get in the way. Um, you know, giving gifts to each other instead of Jesus Christ, it, it doesn't really get in the way. And Our big feast and everything. Okay? For those who say it doesn't get in the way, here's an idea. They can't get in the way if they're not there to begin with. And don't tell me they don't. They do. But you don't tell me that if they're not there, can they get in the way? There's no way they can get in the way if they're not there. Get them out of your life, okay? Make it, bring it back to Jesus Christ, 100% Jesus Christ. That's why you got saved. After salvation, it's 100% about Jesus Christ, 0% about the flesh. You go from being carnally minded and walking after the flesh to being spiritually minded, walking after the Spirit. It becomes 100% about Jesus Christ. Why is Christmas any different? Christmas isn't about Jesus Christ, but I'm talking about the time of the year, December. Why is the birth of Jesus Christ any different? I'll say it that way. Why does Christmas have to be part of it? It's not about Jesus Christ. So, I'll leave you with this verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 1. Okay. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. That's what I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters of Christ, what Paul was telling them. Stand fast in the Lord, my delirially beloved. I beseech Erodius and beseech Synechic, oh, I can't get that name, Scientic, Tyke, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. I'm always against that, brothers and sisters, that whole statement of there's things we can agree to disagree on. That's not what the Bible teaches. Time and time again, we're supposed to be of one mind. Okay? We are supposed to be of the same mind in the Lord. Okay. Verse 3. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Four, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Is what you're doing, you're able to rejoice in the Lord? And again I say rejoice. That's how important it is. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. It's not a good report if you're promoting paganism. I just got to throw that in there. You have a bad report if you're promoting things. Even if you're not doing it with the same intention as the lost world is, you're still promoting it. Okay? You're supposed to have a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. So, think on these things. Let's get into the birth of Jesus Christ, and let's get into the Word hardcore, and let's make it 100% about Jesus Christ. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. See you in the next series.